The idea of singular value decomposition, or SVD, is to decompose the rating matrix R in the unique product of three matrices. Similar to UV decomposition, the aim is to reveal latent factors in R by again minimizing the root mean squared error, or RMSE. Before we get into the details of SVD, let's first refresh some matrix basics. The rank of a matrix is the maximum number of columns or rows that are linearly independent. Consider the matrix shown here. As you can see, the third row equals the sum of the first and fourth row minus two times the second row. Likewise, the second column equals two times the first column. Hence, the rank of this matrix is two. Also remember that an n times n square matrix whose rank is less than n is not invertible and is also called singular. If a matrix has rank R, then SVD will decompose it into matrices whose shared dimension is R. Vectors are called orthogonal if their dot product equals zero. Consider the two vectors shown here. You can clearly see that their dot product equals one times two plus four times minus two plus six times one, which equals zero. Hence, both vectors are orthogonal which also implies that they are linearly independent. A unit vector is a vector with norm 1. Remember, the norm, sometimes also called the Frobenius norm, is the square root of the sum of the squares. In our example, this becomes 1 divided by 5 plus 4 divided by 5, or 1. Finally, an orthonormal basis is a set of unit vectors that are pairwise orthogonal. After this refresher of basic matrix concepts, we are now ready to introduce singular value decomposition, or SVD. You can see it illustrated here. We start from the M by N rating matrix R for M users and N items. We decompose it into the product of three matrices. U is an M by R matrix. Sigma is a square R by R matrix. Vt is an R by N matrix. R is the rank of the rating matrix R. U and V are column orthonormal. VT has orthonormal rows. Sigma is a diagonal matrix with the singular values along the diagonal. As said, Sigma is an R times R diagonal matrix with the singular values. Some of these singular values will be exactly zero depending upon the rank of the rating matrix R. Typically, there will be some big singular values and some smaller ones. The aim of SVD is now to make R smaller by setting the smallest singular values to zero, since these are assumed to correspond to noise. The effect of this is that it renders the corresponding columns of U and V useless which results into a more compact representation. You can see this illustrated here. Let's first look at the sigma matrix with the singular values. Suppose the singular values in the red square are low and the ones in the green square high. If we set the singular values in the red square to zero, then you can see that the red columns in U become useless. Likewise, the red rows in VT become useless. This will result into a more compact approximation of the rating matrix R. Let's work out an example to illustrate how SVD works. Suppose we have a rating matrix with six users, Bart, Michael, Tim, Sophie, Victor, and Laura. We have five movies, Rambo 2, Rocky 4, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Game of Thrones. Since it's a small rating matrix, we can make some quick observations. Bart, Michael and Tim especially like action movies such as Rambo 2 and Rocky 4 and are not too fond of fantasy movies such as Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. Sophie, Victor and Laura don't like action movies, but they do like fantasy movies. You can see that the Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings columns contain identical values 
So the rank of this matrix is 4. Here you can see the result of the SVD decomposition. Let's look at the diagonal sigma matrix in the middle first. You can see it's a 4x4 four four square matrix and not a 5x5 five five square matrix. The reason is because the rank of the rating matrix R was 4. So one of the singular values turned out to be 0 and was dropped. You can see it has two big singular values, 13.74 and 10.88, and two smaller ones, 1 1.36 and 1. This indicates that there are two latent factors in the rating matrix. Let's look at the first two columns of the U matrix. In the first column, you can see a distinction between the first three values and the last three. Essentially, this models the action movie latent factor liked by Bart, Michael and Tim. Let's look at the second column of the U matrix again. Here you see a discrepancy between the first three values and the final three values. This essentially models the fantasy movie latent factor concept as liked by Sophie, Victor and Laura. Essentially, the matrix U can be interpreted as a user to latent factor similarity matrix. The singular value 13.74 represents the strength of the action movie latent factor concept, whereas the singular value 10.88 indicates the strength of the fantasy movie latent factor concept. Finally, the V matrix can be interpreted as the movie to latent factor similarity matrix. Let's look at its first two rows. In the first row, you can see a distinction between the first two values and the final three values. This corresponds to the action movie Latin factor concept. Let's now look at the second row. You can see the discrepancy between the first two values and the final three values. This corresponds to the fantasy movie Latin factor concept. We are now ready to do dimensionality reduction. We will put the two smallest singular values 1.36 and 1 to 0 or reduce the sigma matrix to a 2 by 2 matrix. Obviously, this will remove the corresponding columns from the U and V matrices. Here you can see the result of this. We now have a 2 by 2 sigma matrix with only the two biggest singular values corresponding to the two Latin factors we identified earlier. Let's now also figure out how good this approximation is. At the bottom, we calculated the exact dot product of the U sigma and V transpose matrices. You can see that the result approximates our original rating matrix pretty good. The difference between both the original matrix and the approximation can be quantified using the root mean squared error, RMSE, or Frobenius norm of the differences. An obvious question when doing SVD is to pick the right amount of singular values or R. This can be done using the concept of energy which is defined as the sum of the squares of the singular values. Let's reconsider our earlier sigma matrix. The energy is calculated as 13.74 squared plus 10.88 squared plus 1.36 squared plus 1 squared which gives us 310. A common rule of thumb then states that we choose R such that the retained singular values keep at least 90% of the energy. In other words, if we drop 1.36 and 1, the resulting energy is 307 such that we manage to keep 99% of the energy. Finally, note that the winning entry for the famous Netflix prize used a number of SVD implementations and optimized variants thereof.